Cooper! No, that's not the right sound. Cooper! There's a screen missing. I wonder who it is. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> it's me. I mean, technically, Camper is the one running. Well, guess we're here now. <laughs> yeah, Camper is the one running the, the, the four games. And somehow, two of the game feeds are way wider than the other two. I'm not seeing any problems, but well. Hello, dear Fumophone folks. Hello. Oh, uh, cool. We're the four idiots. We're playing a stupid game <laughs> for you today. <laughs> it is possible that none of us will finish this run. Let's hope it won't. D don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, we gotta get those hopes up. <laughs> Alrighty. It looks like everything's set up. No. No? <laughs> for me, it looks good. Uh, not for me. Huh. I mean, literally, it's missing our names, and the four game things are not on the same size. For some reason. I mean, uh, we were told that he fixes that over the run, so... Okay. Okay. Well, sure. And he can't fix the game sizes. Mm. Sure. I mean, for me, it looks at least okay. It, it looks lookable. So... Oh, I don't, I don't doubt it's lookable. <laughs> That's not what I was getting at. But yeah, the names still uh, have to be fixed, though. Okay, well, I guess, uh, yeah, we, we can do So this is going to be the, the FF10 to HD PC any percent run, which means that we're not going to do the traditional route. So there's going to be a little twist to it. Um, joining the four-man race, uh, there's Jimbo UK31 coming from the United Kingdom. Uh, Badverm coming from the Netherlands. Hadkainen Name from Germany Stop. and myself and I so that makes six of us no kidding <laughs> um, just me Leonis 07 uh, totally not the guy that made the, the the runners coming in for that madness definitely not still appreciate um, the invitation <laughs> coming from France and uh, we're gonna present you the speed run which should take less than three hours so if everyone is ready I'm gonna do the countdown yeah Yep. Good. I need to to make sure my game is on. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's start the festivities with three, two, one. Let's start. Good luck, have fun. Good luck. Good luck. <sighs> this will be so funny again. Right. So as you could see, we just skipped the usual intro. How comes? Because PC version. Yay, PC Master that's Race. All that's all there is to it. This is the only version you can skip that many FMVs. Hey, and there's gonna be a lot that I'm gonna, we are gonna actually Boys. skip. But so now we just have to face One the quadruple only... question marks Yuna kind of girl. Because something's suspicious about her. Alright, let's see how this battle goes. There's the ecstasy. Oh, my ATB actually looking good. Not a bad intro. Because the game, uh, the way the game works is, first of all, if you attack an enemy from behind, you will always deal double the usual damage. So we like to abuse this at the very start when uh, Triple Question Mark uses the Ecstasy and turns around while doing so. To deal double damage so the fight goes a lot faster. Right, and actually that fight has a little of some sort of planning depending on the ATB you get and the course of action. If you manage to get your ATB just in time before the fake Yuna does anything, you can go for her. But if you get instant ATB, and you can put an action in, you try to take the goons out. 
because the ecstasy uh, has a effect on the goons that increases their maximum health. Indeed. Right, so we just d did a bit of, of configuration. We just put the ATB on the fast speed, which just go fast. And we're gonna do a set of um, dodges, encounter dodges, because you can actually dodge them. And if you can't dodge them, they can be infinite. So, you don't want that to happen. <clears throat> I gotta say, I had a pretty decent start. Got a pretty good LeBlanc. Got the goon crit. Because the one fight that we have to do here with the two goons, the fact is both of them have 15 HP. So Pain will always kill one in one hit. Riku needs to crit him to kill him in one hit. Now he was lucky I got that. That's quite uh huh, that's interesting. You can actually delay Logo's disappearance if Riku is attempting to steal for me. Hmm. So All right. So now we find now we find out on my screen that uh, this mysterious Yuna girl is in real the uh, woman LeBlanc who stole an equipment piece for Yuna that allowed her to use uh, like a dress of Yuna that in that case also gave her her skin for some reason. Never explained why that's uh, possible, but yeah. Now we switch to the songstress ourselves, make the girl blind, and then just hit the crap out of her. And the only thing you don't want to get is anyone to miss the target. Because as you can always know, missing means we miss out on damage and that misses out on time save. Uh, wow, Riku is on a crit. Spree. There you go. I could even get the, the kill before the, ne the next darkness dance. That's good. That's not bad. Alright, and mission complete. That's the first split for me. That was already a pretty okay start. Worth to mention that you can still skip the cutscene as well. Uh, so coming up next for me is one of the uh, most uh, one of the biggest reset points of the normal runs. Because, uh, as Leonis mentioned before, this is the HD remake, and the HD remake introduced the Creature Creator, which allows us to capture monsters and let them fight for us. And since we're speedrunners and we want to go fast, we want to get some strong monsters that deal a lot of damage uh, and attack very fast. So we uh, now have to try and get three certain monsters out of a pool of uh, five monsters total. So there is a lot of RNG involved. Uh, for marathon safety, I'm gonna say for every monster that I catch that I don't need, I'm still gonna catch it uh, to improve the chances on getting the monsters we need. So yeah, so right. first we so talk to Finra, he's a real whiz kid, he knows everything, unless when he doesn't know something, then he just refers uh, with, uh, then he just answers with, I'm just a kid. And the creature creator. Alright, so we're gonna go for a set... For a set of monsters. Already have a very good start. Not. As you can see, I'm getting uh, M pots, uh, which are very bad because we need Trap Pots S because the monsters are available in three sizes S, M, and L. And all monsters we need are sized S, so getting M pots is already very bad. Alright, that's another one of those we need. So I have a 33% chance on getting the one we need right away. That's not one that we need. 
Now it's a 50% chance to get it again. And there we go. Alright, so got everything we need for our team. Wow. Alright, now we equip... Uh, what we did before the creature creator was we uh, skipped the tutorial to get a garment grid called Vanguard, which instantly boosts the attack of our monsters by a little. Ah, damn it! Okay, lost a few seconds there by stupidity, but that should be fine. Equipping is done, now we head out for our first real mission. Because uh, Yuna joined a team of so-called Sphere Hunters, and Sphere Hunters, of course, hunt spheres. And we got a signal that one is on the top of Mount Gagazet, so we just fly up there. D did you mention that you had to unlearn some things from... The monsters? I didn't mention, but I did. So yeah, uh, as you've seen what I did uh, with the monsters, I unlearned the spell Fire from Figun, and the spell uh, Water and the skill Magic Up from the Flan, because uh, those are very weak and uh, slow skills. So now, for example, uh, just to say, um, Flan is only able to use Cure, but that we don't care about, uh, is only able to, yeah, Cure. Yeah, uh, which is pretty uh, unnecessary because he will be our damage dealer in a later part of the run, once we get a few items. And uh, since we unlearned uh, fire, Sigun and also Goon now have both each free attacks, which is the normal attack, the skill Mach, which is like steel plus attack, and uh, the special skill armor break from the garment grid. Uh, the thing is, we just use the garment grid for the attack boosting. The skill armor break is more a pain, to be honest, than a help, because it's a very, very slow attack. And we hope that we won't see that very often during the run. So, coming up on Gagazet, the jump glitch. We see we've been followed by LeBlanc and her goons. And now we start to fight them. And yeah, what's so very important happens. in this fight is uh, that we have to hope that our monsters will mock uh, a certain amount of items from them, depending on what route we do. And we already see armor breaks here, uh, which is very bad. Alright, so what Hab didn't mention is that when we were trying to get up to that platform, uh, something could have happened called the the jump glitch sometimes yuna gets a very funny way of uh jumping over the the ledges and sometimes she's just just not responding well so she's just jumping over and back down so it's not something you want okay uh the problem for me is right now i only got one steal from these three enemies uh so i'll have to go with my route i have to go for a backup strat grab an extra chest in order to have enough money to uh, get all the items we need after this mission. Which is kind of sad, so also this place is RNG hell because random encounters can happen everywhere here. And in the, men the moment I mention it, it happens. Uh, average is to get about one or two encounters here, best case you get non-encounters. It is possible, but it's hard to get and just RNG dependent. You look a tad flushed. Why not stop the? To... All right. As you can see, our monsters are pretty strong. They kill everything in one hit by now. Uh, that that'll change in the next areas already, but we deal a good amount of damage here so far. That's the reason why we choose these, because they attack pretty fast. We use the thieves, so they uh, have access to the attack mark, and also uh, have uh, faster ADBs. 
because the class they have uh, determines how fast, uh, how uh, short or long the ADB bar is the monsters have. Alright, let's see. This is the most monster infected area of this place. Let's see. Here's another encounter. Explode! Can't believe it's got a zero encounter. That never happens. Wow, GG, Jim. Oh, by the way, you, you might have like noticed that the, the battle system, when it comes to monster, you cannot control them directly. You have to control them with commands. And the more stars you input during the battle, um, the more different those monsters are going to act. So if you go full 5 stars, they're going to put everything on the offense and get a tremendous atta uh, attack stat. But if you go 0 stars, they, zero stars they're gonna put everything onto the defense, and they're gonna be a tremendous defense stats, but zero attack. And you can also medicate the the, the enemy damages, thing, thanks to that. So if you go five stars, you're more likely to get full potential of damage coming from the enemy. Though if you go to zero stars, you're gonna get nothing, as if none of the the attacks or the spells are even scratching the surface of your skin. So. Uh. Alright, now we see the LeBlanc Syndicate, they are hanging around, having a good time. Or right, so the jump skip really. Hab just got it, if you could see it. Yuna, instead of just uh, climbing the, the ledge, she just, just jumped down in a massive, like, kind of bump. That can happen, so that's a glitch. Alright, getting the chest with the muscle belt, which is a very nice accessory that grants all monsters plus 10, uh, grants one of our monsters if equipped uh, plus 10 attack power and plus 10 defense. And we have our first bo uh, first real boss coming up. Uh, it's not too big of a deal if my enemies don't use armor breaks too much. As you can see, he didn't even get a turn. And there's the sphere we looking we were looking for. Also, as an explanation for those who don't know the lore about this game, uh, a sphere is basically you could say like a, um, a video CD with like recorded videos on it. Obvious. And we tried to hunt for them uh, in order to sell them to persons who might need the informations that are on those, because those are uh, from ancient times ago sometimes. Well, I and um, yeah, many people pay a lot of money for uh, to see how the history of Spira went because um, the Yevonites in Final Fantasy X just made a big secret out of everything and destroyed a big part of Spira's history. And so we just tried to retrieve parts of the history. <laughs> basically for others. That game is finally done with the boss. I believe you got three four to four encounters? Four encounters. Four encounters. So that's pretty unfortunate. That's what I got last night for our practice. And you can already see the difference between for that for those early game segments because the RNG is still there. But we're gonna get rid of it very soon. So I got, uh, I got four preemptors, so it's just bad. Out. Uh, so yeah, where mm -hmm. are we? Uh, Jimbo, Jimbo had uh, zero encounters, I had two, Back had four. What about you, Leo? Two. Two. Alright, now we need some money to found our equipment. So we sell everything we got uh, except the muscle belt, because that one we still need. And we should have enough money now, which is, uh, we need 8,100 gil after the segment. Uh, to buy all the stuff that we need. I don't care. I saw I sold everything and I almost had 10k You sold everything so including the muscle belt Potions, or what? Down, oh. uh, Budget grenade remedies everything, you know, you don't really have to do that. I don't care <laughs> Good point 
I want Incoming all the wristbands. Going to your state. So yeah, now we see the menuing. And uh, just focus a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven text boxes. Then we're good to go and can choose our destination. And our first destination will be the Calmlands. Why the Calmlands, you ask? The calm well, they're a very funny place. You spend a lot of time casually in Final Fantasy X in this place. And uh, we are going to get some equipment pieces, some, uh, some accessories here. So we hope for less to no encounters. While we try to go over there to the two people in front of that hover. And uh, the encounters you can get, there's actually some that could actually be beneficial for you. It's because uh, some of the enemies can use a certain type of attack, which can make brother learn something. Because the way, the, mon cause the, way yes. the monsters, yeah. uh, the creatures in this game work, if they get hit by an attack, by certain attacks, uh, they sometimes are able to learn certain attacks. For, just to give a, give a good example, uh, as you've seen, we unlearned fire from Thigun at the start. So if he's getting hit by a fire attack, he's been uh, he's gonna learn fire spells. So we talk to the guy on the left, buy some credits and trade them in for the accessory, the charm bangle. The charm bangle is a very very f uh, nice accessory because it uh, sets the uh, chances for getting random encounters to zero means we will have no more random encounters over the course of the run. And then we just equip it. We just also bought some wristbands, which also have the effect that they give plus 10 attack power. And anyway, then we just go back to the airship and go to our first needed destination which will be the island of Bisait, uh, which also will be a very RNG heavy place because in Bisait we get the mission to look for Walker uh, on day two after we've done some talking this and Walker more. is in a hidden this cave. The, first time I've the hidden cave is locked by a, uh, has a, uh, the door to the hidden cave is locked by a four digit code. The uh, Numbers for this code are spread all over the island, but we will only get three of them because the fourth one is very far away and we will have to guess the fourth number. And so this is a very major RNG part since you can have any numbers between uh, 0 and 10, uh, 0 and 9. Uh, so yeah, a lot of RNG, it's every time random and it's just a guessing game. Now more on the storyline kind of plan. So we get to be saved because Lulu has a sphere to make us watch because something is pretty noticeable from that sphere. And Yuna reacts to it because the character appearing on that sphere resembles someone she knows and she wants to actually investigate the, the episode. But apparently Waka also has another uh, thing to make the, the party watch. So it might be... Uh, that's that's not that's, that's actually not quite right. Uh, we I already know. we Can already we have the sphere. The no, Let no, we Please, we already you. have uh, the sphere. Lulu shows us. Whatever, I'm gonna mute myself. Uh, thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we already had the sphere. Uh, that uh, was the reason uh, that we became Good sphere morning. hunters because. Uh, Riku came up to Besaid with the sphere at one point, and we're just back here in Besaid right now because we had a signal that there is a sphere hidden in this place. Someone please can talk, uh, tell Jonas he should unmute himself and say I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't want to do all the commentary on my own. So now we start looking for the numbers. Uh, the, do you see the squares on the side of the map? So that those are all our numbers. The first number I got is an 8, which is pretty okay-ish. Uh, the best numbers you want to see are like a 1, 9 or 0. And the number you definitely don't want to see is like 4, 5, 6, because it just takes too long to put them in. 
So the lower or higher the numbers, the better. Because we have to put in every number every time when we try to guess the right number. So having numbers where we don't have to switch around the numbers too often is beneficial. So with my 8-4, I'm not that good so far. I just got a 5, so... Yeah, five. just to say, 0 is the best number, 5 is the worst. 9 and 1 are pretty decent. Never seen that one before. And there's a 1, at least one good number. So the door is right over here. Now we start guessing the numbers. Okay, that's the fifth try for me. That's not pretty good, but okay, if at least. Alright, now we're in the cave. And there's Walker sitting around. I got second try. So. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a terrible number. So. I think I got fifth try as well. Have okay. Catching up. Alright, there's the sphere Walker was looking for. And as Payne always knows, find a sphere and the fiends appear, because that dragon wasn't there like a second ago. And now we're gonna try and kill it. And hope that we get fast attacks next to no armor breaks, because this enemy knows an attack called the Flame Breath, which is very slow, takes a long time to show, and I got a Flame Breath. And Seagoon, as you, as you can just see, uh, Seagoon just learned fire, and fire is slow, so I have to go to the menu right now and unlearn fire. Oh wow. I actually got a super fast fight. I got two, but then uh, I got two armor break cha uh, charge ups. Very sad. So that's the next sphere. It's also a death sphere for the white mage. But we don't need white mages. So, creature, Seagoon, unlearn fire, because fire is slow and weak. And now we just leave the cave, talk to Walker again. And then he tells us what, uh, why he was looking for the sphere. Because he was thinking, uh, because his brother once told him he found a sphere with his, uh, with their parents on him. Anything? Uh, which died, uh, when they were very young. So so he was looking for that sphere, but it wasn't the sphere. And by now he just thinks, ah, oh, I don't care, don't need to see it. But, uh, just how am I supposed to pull it together? Sure wish I had something to go by, you know? You read me? You guys about finished down there? Brother's starting to get on my nerves. Yeah, we'll be back soon. Yeah! Man, I missed the English version of this game. The voice actors did such a good job in this game. Alright. Ah, oh, damn it. Stupid controller unplugged in the wrong moment again. Ah, I really have to get a new cable. Alright, next off, we know there is a sphere hidden in Xanarkand, so we go to Xanarkand. This is where we sat, that night. I wanted to keep that... Now... A Who's idea? By the way, I meant it. Anyone please contact Leo. I'm getting lonely here. <laughs> you. 
You're not lonely. I miss you. Come on. You've changed so. Yeah, but you barely Let's talk. I'm honored. <laughs> Where? Ah, uh, yes. I've been helping Sid with his work. So this is Isaru. He tells us what's going on here. Why this is the tourist attraction by now. People, people come from up. Uh, uh. I can. See. But this is a place of. I know. I. Not. If you. Ah. Uh, I must. So Isaru once was a summoner two years ago, but yeah, stuff happened, not gonna tell what. If you haven't played 10 by now, just do it. It's a great game. <laughs> and there we already seen some of the LeBlanc goons again. Which of course are also here to hunt for the spheres. What was the clue again? And now we meet a very funny little bunch. Because these three kids yes, are also sphere hunters, but not very good ones to tell. Which because, way? of course, they're only children. That way. But they're being led yeah. by someone with at least some experience in uh, fighting. Uh, because the one kid with his question sign here by now, that's Passe. He was a guardian of Isaru two years back. And well, now we anyways, have a few minutes cutscene. This is Hana, and this is Taro. So nice yeah, now they introduce you, yourself, tell us what they're doing here. What are you doing here? There are fiends around. And it's very funny how all four of us are in the same cutscene. Very nice, very nice. That's right. We're <laughs> a very nice hunters. look to look at. The kindergartens! The kindergartens! Yeah, they really have to practice their introduction you a little more. So key must be a clue to finding the treasure. Uh huh. That's right. Shh. We paid fifteen whole gil for that. And that's the point where we, yeah, uh, where every treasure hunter should ask themselves fifteen gil for a clue uh, that uh, to that leads Ooh, to a that. treasure. Of course, that's uh, not really a price you want to uh, you normally see for treasure keys for a clue. or clues. Uh, so we already know something is wrong there. Also, when we go a little further, we also have this guy in, here from the LeBlancs telling us, uh, oh, asking hey, his guys uh, if man, the clue is Mon because he heard Key. So we know, aha, there are two clues that the keys are key, uh, the clues are key and mong. Whoa, and of course, keymong key isn't that much of a password, so the password is, of course, monkey! monkey. We won't let you up. And then they fight us. And they said they won't let us off the, so easily this time, which actually is true because they have more HP right now. So we actually need two hits per person to kill. Because these guys are a little tougher than the ones we fought before. Yeah, yeah, we have three forced encounters with them here. Before we go and go looking for that treasure. Where we know the password for now. <sighs> Way too many armor breaks right now. That's not looking good. Because armor breaks are very slow. You're on Guardian Beast? Hmm? Are you on Guardian Beast fight already? Don't know. Or just uh, the guns and she guns? Uh, oh no, the yeah, with the guns. Goon Figoon is right now starting. Yeah, I just ended the last fight. Hmm. So those were all the forced encounters. So we just move on for now. Oh, 
I'm actually gonna use the next cutscene that's a little longer that I have to hide the stream a little. Having chat still open, but I don't want to see the stream anymore because that is what led to my failure yesterday. Knowing that I'm a little, just a little ahead, um, instantly making mistakes. Just <laughs> Alright, so they ended their treasure hunt here by finding, I think it was three potions in that chest. And for those, of course, that's a major treasure because they're only kids. And here's our Uncle Sid, who is responsible for all of this right now, for this theme park. And we also know that he is the one selling the clues. So? And of course we have a problem with him uh, doing that, because that's the fastest option. And we talk to the guy over here. He tells us that the monkeys are, have sticky fingers and like to steal gill when you talk to him. We have to do this because only then the monkeys uh, stop their blockade in front of the door that we have to go through. And here we are. At the place where we lost all hope last uh, two years ago in Final Fantasy X. And there's Isaru. But he's not really Isaru. Alright, hiding you in the stream. Done well to make it this far, <laughs> Sphere Hunters. That's why. But you will not have the treasure you seek. So, so yeah, he's now asking us for the password. So and since if he thinks treasure, no one would be able to find out that there are two clues that you have to combine I together, he didn't expect anyone to solve it, but oh, we know the I password. Know. The, password is the password is monkey. Uh, and he, he don't know what up. to do right okay, now. So, now so he asks us what is the meaning of life. And we're gonna what? answer the call just because it's the fastest. The real oh. answer is to marry a Hypello because there's nothing more important than marrying a Hypello. Oh, but yeah, there's also an answer there uh, that is, uh, is that Isaru, which already makes it pretty obvious which answer is right. If you have the answers for meaning of life to bring the calm, monkey again, uh, marry a Hypello and is that Isaru, you already kind of figure out which one is the right one. If you take the right one, the scene is a little longer. And he gives us a garment grid that we don't need, so we just take the fastest option on the very top. I see. And then we come up to another boss, which has a big amount of health, so the fight can take a while, especially when your monsters are working against you using armor breaks without a break. Summoners come in all flavors. The most amount of time that I lost here with the worst so. fight that I had were about two you minutes. Just because my monsters trolled me all the time. The sphere Asilo finder Our picked up a signal. Time. There should still be a sphere nearby. But well, let's see if uh -oh. I get a good fight or even Wait. the perfect fight. Okay, because you always have to again. remember uh, all our monsters have three attacks. And one of them is armor break, the other two are good, so we have like every time when their ATB is full, we have a two out of three chance that they do something good. That helps us. Well, yeah, before we forget it, we need a password. Kick, kick its, its ass. ass. Very great password. And now let's try to do that. So yeah, every time you see my a the ADB of an enemy uh, of a, one of my monsters filling purple, that's already bad. Because purple is slow, needs charge time. That's the worst case scenario when all three are doing it. When brother does it, it's even the worst because there is a chance that he will do some voice lines that slow us down even more. 
So yeah, that battle... Not very good. But we killed it. That's the most important part. But then, as some of you might have seen before, uh, the sphere we have here is broken. It's not a complete sphere. They say it's half a sphere, I still, I'm still saying that's two-thirds of a sphere. And, uh, but yeah, the fact is it's broken, so we can't watch it. We don't know what's on what? it. It's only half a sphere. And we will have to find the other part of All it that. to make it watchable. Well, it can't hurt to take it with us. But yeah, can't hurt to take it with us. I can't believe how much this place has changed. Then we just take it with us, go back to the airfield. And then get a message about an awesome sphere hidden in Kilika. Or as I like to call it, uh, Skippy Island. Because uh, in Kilika we have a lot of cutscenes and a lot of skips coming up. We're forced to Kilika now, we can't uh, choose anything else. So yeah, once we enter Kilika, there's a cutscene that we skip. Then we walk 5 meters for uh, into a cutscene that we skip. Then we walk another 10 meters into the next cutscene that we of course skip. Then we walk another 20 meters into the next cutscene which we skip. You get the point. Have you mentioned the cutscenes, Habkine? Yeah, I just did. <laughs> and then, yeah, we will have more fun with monkeys. Because as we find out, uh, the awesome sphere is not, like, hidden anywhere, but it's hidden inside the temple by the people of New Yevon, which is one of the uh, factions in this game. And the Youth League, another f uh, rivaling faction right now, is trying to invade the temple and steal it. And we're just like, if they can't decide who should get it, then we just take it. So we just head into the wood, pass by everyone, sneak into the temple and try to steal it but in order no the we steal the sphere not the temple <laughs> so we sneak past the lines because there is one way that they didn't block luckily and then we find out oh wait there are like roadblocks and you need passwords to get them. So there's up here, there is a part where you can get the informations about the passwords. But we just like, nah, we're speedrunners, we already know the passwords. Because uh, there are now four of these checks. And the combination is you take the first answer, the fourth answer, the third, and then two times the fourth. And it's basically always monkey just different kind of monkeys so the first password is monkey the second password is monkey and it depends on like the amount of people if they're if they're like and I just answered the wrong password just to show what happens when you enter the wrong password and you're getting forced into a fight that was on purpose totally not an accident So yeah, if you get the wrong password, of course they attack us. But there's only for the one fight the problem then. This is a tricky one, because there one person shows up to make it a straight number, but then a second person shows up in the background. And I'm gonna go for safety, because brother got pretty hard hit there. And the next enemy does hit pretty hard. So here's the last boss of this chapter. And we see what he does. He does use the haymaker and he does use it on brother. This is like ideal because uh, we normally don't want to see him use the uh, haymaker because the attack is slow. But if you use it on brother, brother learns an attack called Stormin, which is pretty strong. 
And it's always nice if he charges up and then it turns out to be an arm, uh, be a storm instead of an armor break. Also, yeah, this fight is terrible. Alright, the Tech Stormin is pretty good because it hits a lot of times and the way also this game works is like if you, you hit uh, enemies in a row you get like chains and the higher the chain uh, the attack chain is the more damage it does so like you always get a few percentages on so? the attack if it's in a chain. Goings, let's go! And that's why Stormin is such Sorry, a strong attack because it deals first uh, a good amount of damage in second, there's a lot of attacks to chain up a good amount. And yeah. Now that we killed the boss that was guarding it, we just go back to the airship, grab the sphere that this guy dropped Tough luck. after he found it in the temple, and then we have that. That's chapter one complete. One out of five. So now we get a few items that we definitely never need. Let me just skip some cutscenes. And now we're gonna do the first thing, uh, the first real big skip in this game. Because uh, there are some uh, full motion videos, short FMVs, which we are able to skip, and some that we aren't able to skip. Uh, this scene right now we can skip, but we won't skip because there is a way to like move the skip from this scene into another scene, and we do that to skip a longer scene than this one. Because this scene is pretty short, the next scene after is a little longer. So all we have to do is press start to uh, make the skip button visible after the red. And the light flashed red four times. So this is the first time it flashes right, red. The second time. The third time. And the fourth time. So now I press start. You see the skip button there in the corner. And this skip button now will be uh, available in the next cutscene. Although it normally wouldn't be possible to skip this next cutscene. Coming up in a few minutes. And... But first we have to encounter what uh, we in the community like to call the true final boss. Yeah, and the true final boss just showed its colors to me. <laughs> I got trolled hard. Mm. Because we have... Uh, we just agreed that we want to give back the sphere to one of the factions. But uh, we don't know which one, so we need to calm down so they asked Yuna to dance. And we have some musicians on board. And they say, yeah, if you push us into the elevator, uh, then we will gladly make some music for you. So we push them in the elevator one by one. Or two at once if you're lucky. And they can be a little tricky, a bit tricky. And really mess you up. So now we see Yuna dancing. And although they only asked Yuna to dance, she also will do a little singing. Uh, so yeah, enjoy this little cutscene. Because it's not skippable, sadly.
And it's so nice to hear this scene in English again, because normally we run this game in Chinese, because uh, the text boxes uh, generate faster, so we were able to skip them faster. And uh, that was the FMV skip that, we just, that I just talked about, that we set up. And, um, yeah, normally we run this in Chinese, and in the Chinese version, the person voice acting for Yuna is a little off the music. It's like a second off, which always annoys me. So it's very nice to hear the English version again, especially since, in general, the English, uh, the English voice actors, in my opinion, did a way better work than the Japanese, uh, than Chinese ones. So now we decided where to give the sphere to, and we can choose from Mushroom Rock Road or Bevel, aka the U Fleek or New Yevon, and we give it to the U uh, to New Lev uh, U Ye New Yevon. Jesus Christ, uh, English is hard. And um, because that way we can skip a few battles uh, coming up at the end of chapter two. So this scene we can only skip after the camera change. And then we skip some more scenes. Because while we were uh, all out in Bevel handing out the sphere, the LeBlancs invaded our airship. It'll be a thousand years before you can take on the mighty LeBlanc. And they stole the sphere, uh, the sphere half that we found in Xenarchant just before. And now we just think, yeah, okay, they stole us our sphere. So we steal back what was stolen, because that is the law of the sphere hunters. So for those who know Final Fantasy X, the LeBlanc Syndicate is now uh, living in Guado Salam in, uh, in Seymour's old mansion. And we're just, uh, our brother just said, yeah, let's just get right in there. But we are like, no, no, we can't because that would be too hard. Instead, we found out the plan. We fly around, find members of the LeBlanc Syndicate and steal their uniforms to sneak into uh, their base. But before we do that, we have to do an interview with uh, on here. Uh, to get a certain key item that we need to get one of these uniforms. So we just have to stand in line here for a bit for the people to start moving. Can I just say I just got quick queue for the first time ever. <laughs> so yeah, there are different strats you can do. There are two persons if you talk to them they instantly uh, push in uh, another person and you can just stand in line and there are also some other uh, things you can do the quick queue as Jimbo just mentioned uh, for example but I'm still doing the uh, partly stand in line strat partly talking to the person strats where's Yuna where's Yuna hide and seek where's Yuna okay and now we go in here and we tell this dear man that we want to die. Uh, I mean, Dick. Why do I always mix, miss those up? And now we're uh, like, um, we're allowed to head into the temple for the interview. Which is one of the best interviews in the world because we just go in here. And uh, he tells us like, hello, you're the high summoner. Uh, would you please come outside with me? And then we're like, sure, okay. And we just go outside. And he's just like, uh, now when we meet him, he's just like small talking until Payne mentions uh, we're here for the interview. And then he just asks us, uh, you really sure you want this Never job? Been. And then we just say, just yes, we want. And then say he says, okay, you're hired. Because we just have to be sure that we want it. And then we get the job. And now we're going down here because some of the LeBlanc members are on this road here. And this is one of the scariest fights in the, uh, in the game. Coming up. Because we're fighting uh, Logos and Army. 
the fat guy and the tall guy, uh, which are here. like LeBlanc's left and right hand. And uh, it is possible that Logos uses an item in this fight called a flashbang, which can cause blind on all three of our party members. And blind in this game is extremely effective. So there is a chance that we will game over in this part uh, in this mission here. Yeah, I almost did. <laughs> I didn't have the, the perfect fight. So. But yeah, also even without the flashbang, there is also a big chance because they can get really mean with their attacks. So that's where it was. <laughs> Sorry for the trouble. I appreciate you finding it for us, though. What? So yeah, they were looking for this one sphere they found, we found there, and then we just took it from them. Now they will try to take it back. With them is one goon. And this is the goon we're gonna tr uh, steal the uniform for, uh, from. So we're fighting here now. Hope to kill them very fast. The first one is already done. And that's a storm and that should be the rest. Yeah. That was a pretty decent fight. That was a very, very good. Alright, so prepare for some uh, AIM Plus content because we stole a person's uniform so they run around half naked now. And we got our first uniform. Which Riku instantly took on, even though that's not the uniform we stole, because the uniform we stole was purple ish, and the one we have here is orange. So, next up, we go to the desert, where we just got the uh, letter of introduction for to be allowed to dig here. So, we talk with the boss here. And she will then tell us, uh, before we start digging uh, out components, which is for a side quest, that we of course won't do, uh, she asks us to go to the oasis because some strange people have been sighted there. If she wants to, us to check it out. And also I just uh, noticed again, like always, I forgot to do the menuing here. Because with the sphere we found earlier, we also got an, uh, a garment grid called Unerring Path, which is stronger than the Vanguard that we have. Gives us more strength. And so we just switch over real quick. And we no longer have to attack Armor Break anymore, but now we have to attack... Um, um, crackdown, which is a little faster, at least. Oh, Leo got the game over. That's an F. But yeah, as we said earlier, that's one of the, uh, that's one really of the worst fights in the game, RNG wise. Yeah, I think Leo got hit with flashbang. Yeah, he did. He did. So Riku now tells us that there's a sphere, which is very good because I would have thought that was a trash can. And after we get it, Logos will appear. Ouch. That hurts, Leo. Okay, this fight is not too good, but at least he's done. By the way, Leo, if you can hear me, please come back. I miss you. <laughs> don't want to, don't want to do this alone. Please, <laughs> Leo. All right, now we got the second uniform, and next off. We go to Ga uh, Mount Gagazet, where we'll be, uh, where we will meet one of Yuna's old guardians, Kamari, who is now the elder of the tribe of the Ronzos.
Whoops, what am I doing? And he says he's sorry, uh, but that doesn't. We don't really care because that was the only sentence we hear him say. And we'll never see him again in this game. There are a few side quests, including the Ron Souls, but since this is any percent, we don't give a damn about them. So next we know, uh, Kamari told us that uh, some st uh, some people have been sighted uh, climbing up the mountain, uh, going to the holy places of the Ronzo where it's forbidden to go, and we're now going to check that out. And it turns out these persons, which are uh, walking on holy ground here, are LeBlanc's uh, goons again. So we know there are LeBlanc goons here, and we can steal our third and last uniform from them. Uh, also, honorable mention, uh, there are two ways how to do this mission. You can either uh, at one point follow uh, the goons and get the direct way, or you could climb up the mountain even higher, drop down by accident into uh, the place and then have a bathing scene. Which I'm not gonna show because that one is slow. But yeah, for all who want to know, uh, want to play this game, uh, it's a very nice scene. <laughs> it's it's nice for for one hundred percent. Hmm. So yeah, we see the goon here. We follow, and then we find out that there's a hot spring up here, and two of the long goons are taking uh, a quick bath right now. Can you believe there's a hot? Spring? Okay. So we're planning on stealing their uniforms the while they're in the bath, hey, the because we're good <laughs> girls, me. Kappa. Uh, so I know. I don't know. They're the ones. Exactly. But before we do that, Orby shows up, and we tell him that they take a break, and then we tell the girls that he's sneaking, trying to sneak a peek. He thinks about his reputation, tries to attack us. Guys, don't forget to save. Don't forget to save? Yeah, thanks. Safety save. Where? Oh, for misogyny? Uh, <laughs> I just take the auto save. Uh, or, or in uh, plan B, I still have uh, a save file ready for after Guadalajara. Yeah, there is a safety. Is there is an auto save on massage. Yeah, right when you enter the room with LeBlanc, you have to watch through the LeBlanc scene again, but okay, probably just... quicker than resetting. Yeah. All right, so we dealt with this one, and we uh, got our first and last Mission uniform, <laughs> we found and all the. Uniform. Setups are done, so it's time for Grand Theft Fantasy 10-2 Because we're going on a heist now We're going on a heist to rob from the Le, from LeBlanc's mansion the sphere that he stole from us So and now we have another heavy reset point uh, for normal runs coming up because uh, in LeBlanc's mansion uh, we're taken for normal goons as it would be uh, as it was intended from us and we'll get the um, I hope we'll get the task from Logos and Army to help LeBlanc unwind because he's uh, always. Uh, a little funny when her lover shows up Which he just did so we get the task to go into her bedroom and give her a massage and The thing is depending on how we do this mini game if we uh, Finish the mini game on first attempt we get a very good accessory which we need for the run if we don't get enough points in this mini game uh, We will get a bad item which isn't really gonna help us through the run and we have to do the massage again anyways, the but uh, we're getting more points for certain things then. So we have to finish this on the first try you. to get the good item, else we have to restart the game and you load the autosave and try again. So 
so yeah we're gonna hear some funny noises by the way just to warn you because LeBlanc really likes massages so let's see if we get it So yeah, let's see. Not there. So yeah, blue is the worst thing you can get. Not there. Uh, green is okay. Yellow is very close to where we need to go, and red is of course the best. Nope, wrong side. Uh, could get close for me. Okay, got it. Right, I got the first try. The boss fell asleep. We've been waiting for her too. So yeah, this is another major ra uh, race changer point here. If someone might have failed this, the back of the. So yeah, now they tell us if the switch is working, on the back on the living room. Which is right here, which only uh, lifts up this shield thingy, but then as we experiment around a little, we find out it's a, a door that we uh, opened to the secret hideout of the LeBlanc Syndicate. So, we now go in here, but then Brother asks in and is very loud during uh, view our headsets, so we get detected. And uh, give out some Fs for Ormi, because in this section, in this dungeon, you could say, we'll go uh, we're gonna beat him up three times. The first encounter here is just Ormi with some goons. Then in a few meters, we get another encounter with Ormi, Lo uh, Ormi and Logos. And then a little further on, we have a fight against Lormi, uh, Ormi, Logos and LeBlanc. So yeah, we gotta beat up that poor guy three times right now. But first we get the reward for the uh, minigame, which is the gold hairpin, an accessory which allows us to uh, reduce the uh, magic points that we need to cast spells or use special abilities by half, which we will need for our uh, damage dealer uh, shortly, or in a, in a uh, short time. So we find a sphere, but it's not the sphere that they stole from us. It's a only naughty girl. And then those two show up again. The bosses. And then we gotta beat them up. And hopefully pretty fast. The only thing you have to watch out here is that your uh, characters don't go underneath 400 HP and then you should be good for the rest of the fight uh, if that happens that they go under uh, 400 HP you just have to throw a potion after the fight and of course now they all start their specials come on <sighs> Bad ending. The fight started good, but then in the end, they just wanted to throw me. Okay, now they run away and arm the booby traps. Because yeah, this hideout has booby traps. Booby traps. <laughs> so we have to press three buttons to disarm the booby traps. And do a thing that never made sense to me as a child when I played this game. 
because the third button is a little hidden. Like, when we move up here right now, a spike wall will appear. And of course, when you see a spike wall, the first thing you do is run away from it. But we instead run straight into it to get a cutscene where we jump down here to end up somewhere further up on a uh, position which is way higher than before to find the third button and disarm the booby traps. And we press the last button to open this door to find LeBlanc's bedroom. So we are. If you could have maybe told the, uh, the room where we found the gold hairpin was Ormy's uh, room, the second one where we found the sphere is Logos' room, and this is LeBlanc's room. Or well, better said, that's mission room. Better rather said because LeBlanc's room is upstairs. Yeah, so never awesome. mind. And yeah, now we have a fight. This put that potentially can be scary because they use a team attack when all three are alive for too long, which can be very very dangerous. And also, uh, LeBlanc can use an attack called uh, Not So Mighty Guard, which I sadly see, which gives them protection. So we deal less damage. But there they are, they're all dead. Or defeated, because we don't kill people in this game. That would be no hilarious if we could kill people Wait in this game. So yeah, now they are, uh, now we uh, threat her to hurt her even more, because no one is going to hear her scream. And then she's just like, okay, have your spear back. Because they actually had the second half of the sphere already. So now we have both parts and we can watch it. But actually we won't watch it because we can skip it. That is we finished our analysis. And it shows us the Colossus called Vagnagon. Vagnagon is a machina. Uh, with the power to destroy the whole world. And of course now our task will be to go to Bavel, where Vegnagan is hidden by New Yevon. And we're gonna try there, uh, we're gonna go there and try to take it apart before uh, it has a chance to do anything drastic. Sin is gone. The eternal calm. I've realized. So yeah, now we head to Bavel. Which is also, again, forced. We can't go anywhere else anymore. To do side quests or something. Now we do the planning. And LeBlanc actually has a good plan. It's obvious we nab the head honcho. Then we make him... Then we make him lead us to Vecnagan and checkmate. A girly man like that doesn't stand a chance without his escort. Careful. He's much stronger than he looks. Come. Who goes there? So yeah, here's the big reason why we Get gave up. the sphere to New Yevon. Because if we would have gave it to the oh, Youth League, uh, they Please would have attacked us. My rudeness. And we would have had to fight them. And ev uh, then there are three or four more guards along the way down here, which would do the same as long as we come close. So now we can just talk to this guy, take a small ride to the other side of the bridge, and yeah, skip three or four battles uh, that way by just giving them to the other faction. Normally I personally prefer to give it to the Youth League, but speedrun is speedrun, and these fights are slow. Uh, that's personal preferences. So yeah, now we're invading Bavel. But as we find out, if we would talk to the NPCs here, uh, the Praetor is gone by now. They don't know where to find him, and so they're in total chaos right now. So we just go and make our way towards uh, Vecnagon ourselves. 
because we're speedrunners, we know exactly how, where we have to go. So yeah, you've seen a little lift in the middle, and that one uh, drives up to go to, an, uh, to a higher place where nothing is. But there is a control over here for the way that we just unlocked to make it go down and to drive us into the Bevel Trials of the tem Temple, sorry. And so we walk along the Trials and make our way uh, further through Bevel for now. And if you like Brother and the uh, kind how he is, uh, you should enjoy these last minutes because we have like six or seven battles only left with him. Then we gotta throw him out of our party because we have someone better. Wait. Well, I didn't got a sick of preemptive. Uh, the temple's the weak of. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad, but. <laughs> Like why? Why does why does this happen? I'm just hoping that the raptors here won't poison me, because I always like to because uh, uh, the poison here is not really in my favor when I get it. Every time I did get poisoned here and then just skip the safe sphere in the uh, in front of the faith room, uh, the poison was in the end the reason that I died. Wow. Yeah. Now only happened two or three times by now, though, that I actually did that strat. Is uh, by the way, is every is everyone uh, fine with levels? Like my my goon died uh, uh, at only levels for long, and my uh, fem goon died or chimney goon died at uh, only levels. I don't think that should make too much of a difference, though, because those I are pretty early, uh, pretty early game enemies that shouldn't make too much of a difference. They still should be able to tank through tail in the end. I hope. I hope. Bless <laughs> MG. I mean, yeah, they my, they already my, have high HP, so. My my she goons died twice so far, so I'm hoping that won't be an issue. I haven't anyone been if, dying by if, now, and I'm if, happy uh, about it. If if you can you can put in safety strats like putting she goon to warrior, I think. That should survive it. Oh, uh, okay. I think... And I, I haven't tested it, but... <laughs> By the way, guys, uh, message from Leonis. Come on, get a game over and we can talk, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that could still be a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably get a game over at the old fight. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Now we see here. Normally there was the stone which had sealed the faith in it for summoners, and uh, but now we have uh, a secret pathway that was ripped open here into the lower levels of Bavel, which were hidden for nearly a thousand years. Now we go on here and the uh, security mechanism detects us and sets into lockdown mode. So now we have to go back to unlock mode. Uh, so we have to fight a few enemies. So there are two machinas. Riku is begging, is saying, hey, we're the Gallwings. We're the ones who uh, are with New Yevon. But yeah, machines don't care about that. So we start fighting. I believe, Leo, that we all got the uh, fifth by pedestals, and you got the first by pedestals, so we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so those were the two, uh, the first, uh, that was the first encounter. We have three more encounters with Brother here, because we have to unlock seals. Therefore, we go to three towers which have blue lights in front of them to unlock the seals. There are three towers that ha don't have blue the blue light in front of the entrance. Uh, those are needed for an additional uh, side quest. Like after you unlock the seals here, now after you unlock the seals here, um, you can uh, 
make three more platforms appear. And those three additional platforms can lead you to a chest containing a ribbon. Uh, a ribbon is a very famous item during all of the uh, most of the Final Fantasy games, which uh, makes you immune to nearly every bad status effect. But we don't need that here because it's slow and we don't get status effects that much, so never mind. Also, yeah, I just had a very, very bad encounter. I got two haymakers and a lot of crackdowns. That was a terrible fight. See, so yeah, a fight RNGs, uh, RNGs basically in every fight. If you get the bad movements, that costs seconds. And it can cost a lot of seconds or a few seconds. That was a good fight. That was a fast fight compared to the one in fr before that. Like, that's already like how the fights can differ. Like, it was the same enemy, he has the same stats. So now we have the third seal, the last seal, the last battle with brother and a mini boss. Which is not very strong. And reused from the original game, from Final Fantasy X. But he's not nearly as dangerous as in Final Fantasy X. So let's hope for a quick fight. That doesn't look good because that's a crackdown, not a Stormin. If he would have charged the Stormin here, that would have been completely fine by me. But he did not uh, crackdown. But okay, fight's over. Last brother fight done. Say goodbye to uh, brother because we won't see him in the battles anymore. So enjoy his last seconds of him dancing. And that's it. <laughs> So yeah, now we can just jump down here and continue to the prison tract. Where we gonna do a small, uh, you could, ba uh, you, although you now we couldn't really say mini game, uh, a small movement game uh, that will lead us to two very overpowered items. Which will increase the power of our monsters by a lot. Like, after the next room, uh, we will have a monster in our party dealing about uh, two to three thousand in one hit, and a monster that can deal ten thousand damage in one hit. <coughs> which will, uh, which will, we will switch in for brother. So yeah, this is the prison tract. We have these things here moving around. These prison cells, you could say, are those. And here's a button. If we step on the button, the movement of the uh, the movement of this stops completely. So we just wait until we get one that is lowered here on the very top, so we can jump on top of that, which will be exactly now. Now we just jump on top here. And now Riku does some playing around with these things to find out how it works. So now we can t tell Riku to move this around. So we move over here, jump off, tell Riku to move it. Riku. Coming right and to stop it right away. Or not, because I'm stupid and I haven't ga played this game in a while. Riku. Except yesterday, one yeah. run. Because it has two movements here. So we go up here, move one further to the right or left, whatever you, whatever your point of view is on that. And then we have here a chest containing an item called Bloodlust. And we tell Riku to move the thing one more time. So we can enter the door that you can see down on the right there. So 
So we go up here again. Make our way down here. To enter here. To find a small chest down here. Which contains the ring. And now we do some uh, changements. Not creatures. Party. Because we put Flan Azul in for brother. We'll give him the Unerring Path Garment Grid. And give him as items the gold hairpin that we found earlier and the ring. So he has now more magical power. And what am I doing here? Jesus Christ, I'm stupid. Which gives him more magical power and allows him to use the spell uh, Flare, which is one of the st strongest spells in the game. And Goon, we give the Lore Bracer, uh, which uh, makes us having more encounters. And increases his strength by a bit, uh, by a bit plus the blood lost, uh, which will increase the strength even further. But the lucky thing is, since brother still has the charm bangle on, to set the encounter rate to zero, uh, that still is active even with us having the lore bracer now, which makes more encounters. So that doesn't like negate itself to normal encounters. We still have no encounters, and the only effect the Lord Bracer has on us right now is to increase strength on the goon. So we have a little, uh, so we have a little walk more to do before we start what I like to call the shiny hunting season. Because of a running gag of mine. To explain that, uh, when I casually play Final Fantasy X, I always like to do a running gag to name uh, Titus Ash and to name the Aeons after Pokemon. And uh, right now, we will go and uh, have to fight Dark Aeons. Which are basically just differently colored versions of the Aeons, which are also evil. Forced evil in this case, not by hard evil. And uh, since they are like differently colored from the normal Aeons, I like to call them the shiny Aeons. So as you can see, Flan is OP, dealing 9999 in one hit. Which makes him basically able to kill nearly Sorry. everything I'm going ahead. in here. You have your... There are only some late game bosses where he needs My... to do Wait two up. attacks to kill him. Because so they have more HP. Together. What could be waiting where the threads meet? Alright, so now we go and kill uh, my best friend, uh, actually. Because uh, in the speedrun of Final Fantasy X, we currently use mostly uh, the Bahamut strat, which just uses to overpower Yuna to summon Bahamut and to kill everything in one hit. And we're gonna kill Bahamut now. And since Bahamut is a dragon, and he is kind of legendary, I named him in my uh, I name him. Zekrom mostly, which is the legendary Pokemon from Pokemon White. And damn it, I crit the shiny. Why do I always crit the shinies? I want to catch the shinies, not crit them. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so yeah, that's Dark Bahamut. Or shiny Zekrom. Why is this happening? wish you were here with me. So yeah, Yuna is sad because Aeons were sealed two years ago. Thank you, Pain. You and uh, yeah, she's a little sad because they were the, uh, her friends, the Aeons. Uh, but as we found out now, normally Vecnagon was supposed to be here, but no Vecnagon is here and only this giant hole in the ground. So, long story short, Vecnagon was activated uh, because it's very a uh, unique machine because it reacts to anger and if it feels that someone wants to harm this machine, uh, it activates and flips out and that it just did and escaped. Yeah. Vecnagon. This isn't how it 
was supposed to be. The eternal calm. I can feel it crumbling, falling away from beneath our feet. And now, Yuna, we're in Super Doodoo. -doo. Yes, we are in Super Doodoo -doo right now because the world is falling apart. With Vagnagon gone, uh, and Aeons appearing, they don't just appear here in Bavel, but they appear in every single temple, and with them come a giant amount of strong monsters. Fiends are so fiends are pouring out of all the temples, with having the dark Aeons, or the shiny Pokemons, in the end of it. So we are gonna head out to the temples and save the people, kill the Aeons. And we're starting in Bavel, te uh, Bavel Temple, in Besaid Temple. Where we talk to Lulu, he says to us, uh, yeah, uh, the fiends that were coming out of the, the temple are gone already. They killed everyone, it's but right. you could go around scout, uh, look for more, mon uh, yes, sir, uh, for right. more fiends around. Any fiends they Waka and the rest split up. The gull wings are on the job. That. <laughs> That's okay. It's all. All right. In the village will... Now, when we leave here, we will have a little cutscene that we skill with Finra placing an invention of him called the Com Sphere, which is basically just like a webcam. And here's brother. <laughs> uh, which is basically like a webcam which will be important at the start of next scene because we use those webcams on some places to scout out how Spira is doing after the monster attacks. So this is also Backlam. He wants to burn the temple so the fiends can't, uh, can't pour out of it anymore. He wants to just set the whole place on fire. And since this is our hometown and we became a summoner here uh, two years ago, uh, we don't want this place to be burnt down because of all the good memories. So we just go in here and try to find the source. What causes this fiend strip here? Now we find Walker here, he was injured, which is completely bullcrap because he's one of the strongest characters we have. Uh, able to deal 1.4 million damage in one uh, attack. And he's getting hurt by some small fiend. So I'm not seeing a shiny Pokemon here. Oh wait, there it is. So it's a big bird. What could a big bird be? Of course, it's a Pidgeot. No. Waka. <laughs> so have fun with the shiny Pidgeot. Let's hope that I can weak it without critting it. Come on, Flan, don't crit it. God damn it! That's another shiny dead. Also, just to say, uh, for those who might have the idea right now, yes, you can capture monsters here. The Dark Aeons are non capturable though, because they're unique. So yeah. even if I would have tried to capture them, that A wouldn't work here, but only on the uh, on the airship, and B uh, just isn't possible. Would have been Man, funny though. Fiends ever come out of the temple? Uh, but call me before you do. So yeah, that's be safe done. Next, we're making our way to Kilika Temple, which is a little harder to reach. Because, again, there is a war in Kilika between the two factions, between the Youth League and New Yevon. And the city that we land in is, uh, is Youth League territory, and the wood is, uh, or the temple is New Yevon territory. So we have to find a way to pass, uh, to sneak past some guards, and able to be able to, uh, Enter the forest and go there. With also one of the most stupid mechanics in the game that exists. So we go visit Donna here. Donna was a summoner like ourselves two years ago. She's with you uh, with uh, the youth league, and she will help us to get in here by distracting one of the guards. So this mini game normally is like you have to look 
if the guard that Donna distracts isn't looking, if the uh, door is open, and if no one is seeing you running in. But the only thing you get from that is a chest There's that we don't need, and it's slow, so we just run through the closed door uh, in order to just get out of here faster. So Donna gave us a hit, hint, there's a hidden path, walk the treetops. And this part of the game is pretty stupid. You see there's a girl's closed gate. But you have to walk half a meter in front of it to know, oh, there's a closed gate. And there are two more closed gates here, which surprisingly are closed. And in front of all three, you have to walk like half a meter in front of them to see, oh shit, this is closed. I can't get past here. And after you've done that with all three, they remember, wait a sec, Donna said something about walk the treetops. Oh wait, let's just do that. Because we don't know that closed doors are closed. How would we ever know that closed doors could be closed? Donna said. So as we've seen uh, the cutscene in chapter one, we just walk. jump up here, walk along the path, and walk up to the temple. Which also is pretty funny to mention right now. Uh, when you play this game casually and don't have a charm bangle to negate all encounters, you actually can have random encounters with the guards here. So you could literally say the guards are running away trying to save themselves, and we are here to save them, but they are like, hey, you're not with us, you're our enemy, how did you get here, we're gonna kill you. Are we just here to save you? No, we're gonna kill you. Or at least try to, because they are pretty weak. So yeah, now it's mission time. This mission is uh, a little funny, because we will have to uh, clear roadblocks by enemies. And the thing is, we have to hope that Goon gets some crits. Because with the amount of enemies we have here, uh, and the timing of the attacks, it is possible that uh, our two melee fighters will kill an enemy, but due to the timing, Flan, uh, Flan will still use a flare spell on the already dead enemy, which will take some seconds because the, uh, of the spell animation, and which will still cost magic points. And due to the amount of enemies we have here, we want to have at least two battles where Flan isn't using this flare spell on the enemies in order to have enough MP in the end to kill the boss. If that doesn't happen, we have to do an extra menu and fill up his MP. So we have to hope for the crits or for the fast uh, ADB, ADB bars. So as you can see, he's not dead yet. They killed him and now he uses his flare. It doesn't even deal damage anymore. It just takes time for the animation. Now we don't want to see at least for two battles. And we have uh, one, two, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five more battles. There we got a crit from Goon, that is one kill without a flare. I need the same encounter one more time. Else I'm losing about 5, 6, 7 seconds for the extra menu. We have two more battles and only the next one we can do flareless, so let's hope. Because in the battle after, uh, there's a 100% chance that he gets at least one flare off. Because next battle will then be fighting two enemies at once. And sadly that's not enough. So I will have to use an Aether to fill up his MP. 
There are people who do a strat to do a menuing before these fights and to swap out Flan for Brother and then switch Flan back in before the fight. But in my opinion it's not really worth going for because that's that takes way longer than just uh, doing an attack here, uh, just doing, giving an ether, because you have to do two additional menus that way. So yeah, we give an ether now to fill up his MP so he is able to flare the enemy. And we're off to our next Aeon, or next Pokemon. So, it's a dog, it's fire type, so there's only one Pokemon that really comes in mind here. And that's Houndoom. Say hello to yeah. Shiny Houndoom. And another crit! <laughs> Damn, these 9,999 damage hits. I just want to capture these shinies. <laughs> Alright, we have one more shiny for now. Because uh, before we get here at the uh, Jose Temple, the machine faction was having everything under control. But then uh, Gipple disappeared too, so Newt from the Youth League, the leader of the Youth League, is missing right now. Uh, Barrow was missing after we fought him, and now uh, after this mission, Gipple also is missing. Uh, there is a small side quest where you find them all, uh, where you fought uh, the Dark Bahamut to get some lore of the game. But that's a side quest, that's slow, so we're just gonna go right to Joseph Temple, which will be uh, one of the last two um, big points where the run can completely change. Because there's a random minigame in here, in this temple. There are five pedestals in a room here. Four of them cause an encounter, one of them causes the door to open. And they're every run random. Uh, wow. So if someone gets it first try and the other person gets this, uh, gets the fifth one, that also oh, will take a small uh, two or so. Uh, I don't know how the run is going because I uh, turned off the uh, video of the stream, luckily. So we will see in the end how it turns out, how the players will be set after this mini game. I got fourth. Fourth? Ouch, that hurts. I don't know about uh, Jimbo. I'm just coming up on pedestals now, so I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm okay. just uh, entering the temple. Yeah, same here. And elevator up. Alright, have kind. I'm going with my usual routine. <laughs> So let's give me that sweet, sweet first try. Or not! And that's gonna be the sweet, sweet second try. Or not! Or not! <laughs> hey, here we go. I kinda have a deja vu from yesterday. Because we did a small run yesterday evening against each others. That's not the third one. Okay, 50% chance. Let's see. Okay! I get a fifth try pedestal. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> what about you, Jimbo? I'm currently going for third. Uh, try. Lucky you. Yeah. 
So yeah. the other the other thing that's pretty funny right now to speak. So what we've heard, Leonis had some problems. Uh, Beck is about a minute or two ahead of us. Jimbo and I are about tied, which is pretty funny since uh, PB wise scene. Beck is the best of us. He's about uh, three four minutes ahead of my PB. I'm ahead of Jimbo by about twenty seconds, PB wise. And Leonis is uh, far off us because he's not really running PC that often. So it's actually funny how it's actually the deja vu that we're about on uh, comparing to PB. So by the way, this is an electrical unicorn. Uh, so this is Dark Axion, or for me, that's Shiny Zep Striker. Mind you, haven't I died? I'd be ahead of you three. That's great, Leo, but sadly you did die. Sadly you did die. I know problems can happen sometimes. The RNG in this game sometimes is just terrible. Yeah, Leo was ahead before he died, so yeah, he would have been. So, another hole. I wonder what's down there. But Yuna knows somehow in... some uh, She thinks every the secret uh, every secret of the world is hidden in this hole. But something tells her... Something tells her that she shouldn't go down there. But Faith decides otherwise and just gives us a bomb to blast Yuna in there. So now we're falling in the hole and we will meet the bad guy of the game for the first time. Or for the third time, but uh, the scenes where we've seen them before we basically skipped. So this scene is skippable, but we won't skip it because we use it in the end to skip a, se uh, a scene after that's uh, about 30 seconds longer. That's I'll normally right back, guys. not a able to skip. Also, Leo, if you at least still can hear me, remember, don't miss the skip today. Just <laughs> don't miss it. Thousand words is great, but uh, the sound is on my end, not on your end. So thousand word on your end wouldn't be any beneficial. <laughs> so don't miss the skip. Works too, Leo. Just skip this scene instead. Also for Abel. Also possible. <laughs> What's happening? So yeah, we've seen a guy that looks like Titus before already. Who was talking about a girl called Len. We find out now that this boy is like Titus 2.0. Like a Titus copy from a thousand years ago. And he's just a memory, and his name is Shuyin. Thousand years ago, he was a Blitzball player in Zanderkant, and in love with a summoner slash uh, popster called Len. And Len is actually uh, a girl from thousand years ago that was used by Shinra, the Whiskit, to make the songstress dress sphere. And since Yun and Titus are like the same than uh, Titus and then, uh, then Yun and Titus are the same than Suyin and Len and uh, he mistakes Yuna for Len. Because he wanted to save Len a thousand years ago but died trying alongside her because she tried to stop him from what he was doing. Which was destroying the full war, uh, was destroying uh, a whole country with their own weapon. Don't touch me. <laughs> and yeah. Whose feelings are these? Mine? 
All right, coming up is the skip because there's a certain point where we want to press and this point is now. So we get the skip, you see it's still there. And we will have it for the next FMV. Open your eyes. But for now it turns out Julian isn't himself. He's just like a kind of ghost that possesses people. And currently he's possessing Barely. And Newt and Gibble are now here trying to stop Julian, get their friend Barely back, and stop him from destroying the world because he is the one who stole Vecnagon, and he wants to use Vecnagon to destroy the whole world. So they give us some spheres for pain, pain. because uh, those three and pain are old friends. Yeah, give her this and too. these spheres they gave me are like huh? a key uh, for the whole backstory right Just now sure for what him, happened, right? How do you know why Barali is possessed now, why Newt was possessed before Barali, how Control. he possessed them, when he possessed side. them. Therefore, we need ten certain spheres, the crimson spheres. To like open the gate to go there, I didn't but know yeah, sight—that's all sight looked, stuff, sight game stuff. But more than anything, I'm just angry. One thing after another, and I'm already confused to begin with. Hey, where am I? All right, time for a little meme coming up. So yeah, we're here now. We don't know where to go. Yuna's desperate and she is all alone and she's sad and angry. So she doesn't know what to do. So she's gonna scream, but Yuna, she tried to practice smiling when feeling sad, you know? So... Ha 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 ha! Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> I'm all alone. No, you're not. Where are you? So you can whistle four times here by pressing X on certain points uh, to make Titus appear and show her the way out. But only whistling once is the one that, uh, where we get fastest out. So that's what we do. And uh, we're back on surface. Yeah, when I actually started this game, I used to mash X thinking I was controlling Yuna. Not realizing I was actually controlling Shuyan. Hmm. Feels bad, man. Come in, Yuna. Yuna! Yuna, reporting in. <laughs> Yuna! So that's chapter three to complete. Uh, as after every chapter, we get a few items. A few less because we only can carry one more of the items. So we skip a few text boxes by just taking them all with us. Now we just skip some cutscenes because we don't care. Now we're gonna go on deck to give pain the spheres they gave us. But before Riku wants to come do some boy talk like you met Shuyan, was he anything like you know who? Like Titus? And it's always the same with me. There is literally there are two points in the game where in the elevator you have to take the very top uh, option. And I always miss out on which two occasions that is. <laughs> So I lost a few seconds here by traveling to the cabin instead. And that's okay, that's okay. So yeah, one more scene here. And then Shinra says, yeah, Spira's in trouble. Check the, check the webcams that I set up all over Spira. And we're like, okay, let's check them out. We have to look into four places, but we don't really have to look. So we just go in there and say bye again. 
That's all we need. We just go in there and then instantly go out of there and then that's done. This one takes a moment longer. Because uh, we're getting carried by Donna through Kilika right now. She walks with us uh, right through a fat man because he's apparently a ghost. And then she just throws us on the bed. And then we leave, because we don't care. A Mushroom Rock Road, headquarter of the Youth League. They just throw the, sphere, uh, the webcam in the sea, because we are their enemies. And then Bavel, we also just leave. And with that, that section is done. This is basically chapter 4, in uh, 100%, where, uh, because you have to take... A lot of scenes in here because a lot of scenes in fact your uh, percentage in the game and you have to watch through a lot of scenes in this game so yeah now we decided okay we gotta try to uh, unite Spira again with the people because uh, with the leaders gone um, both factions the youth league and uh, new Yevon think the others want to use uh, the fact that their leaders are gone for a preemptive attack hey, you. and so both want to do a preemptive attack we have word uh, So in other words, we're very close in front of a war and to prevent that war We decide we want to uh, we want to give a concert and sing Because uh, two years ago when we brought all spirit to sing the hymn of the faith there was a, some kind of energy and since we want to do a concert, of course, we need someone to promote us, to manage that. And that's Tobley, the small guy in the back there. But uh, he has some depths f uh, with some guys. And they try to get them depths out of him. So they try to chase him. We try to uh, catch up just to talk with him. And this section is basically f like five or seven minutes of auto-scroller. Because we just have to run and run and run and run. And also we learn some funny things in between, like, for example, the fact that these guys are way too stupid to find where he is. Although I can tell from the very start where he is, every time. And not just because I played this game already a hundred times. And yeah. So, totally is hiding in the left here, uh, in between the trees right now, but they don't know, so they just keep running to their colleagues. And they tell us, totally passed away, nope, so go take another good look. Another good look with double D. Very important. Another. So we go back now. And the guy finds Tobley. And then, yeah, now we learn that Tobley is actually able to use uh, teleport. Because I'll show that to you right now. So he will come out running from the wood right now. And then run down. And we will chase him. like you can hear his footsteps you can hear his footsteps because they're a little faster than ours because he does small steps but fast steps you can see him right here and if you listen closely now his footsteps are gone and now he comes riding with the bike that was standing on the other side of the road so yeah basically you just teleported because he was right in front of us, and a second later he was on the other side of the road to steal a bike and come here with it. Only reason to explain that? Teleportation. I'm still sad that... I'm just sad that no one... No! He isn't just fast. We literally saw and hear him... Uh, <laughs> Two seconds before he comes again. 
We see him running in front of us and we hear him running in front of us until like a few seconds until he comes. So now we go here and they tell us the soup and the soup puffs. The high pellets tell us he crossed the moon flow. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna ride the soup puff. And yeah, we gotta ride the shoe buff to get to the other side and to keep hunting for him. So the three guys from the start are already out of business. There are two guys left and one of them is actually smart. Because the one guy here now predicts you don't suppose he's climbed on a tree. And so he's gonna go and hit that tree and that's exactly the tree totally is on. So he's the only smart boy in this gang. But sadly, totally falls on his head. And because the other guy is get uh, is mad now on totally, he's screaming, "You, I'm gonna, you gonna kill," which makes perfect sense. But Tobli also knows how to teleport a Supuff towards him to just bring the other guy to run away. So now we just have to follow Tobli and we can tell him that we plan to do a concert to unite Spira again. And he asks us where it should be. We say it doesn't care as long as we can get a lot of people there. So Tobli suggests we bring them into the Thunder Plains. You know, the place where always it's uh, where it's always thunder, where lightning always strikes. Hi, hi. And we'll bring a few thousand people into that plains to listen to a song of us. A minor detail. Or not, because we gotta s just go out there and say, Hey, it's a prank! Have fun getting struck by lightning. At least in the speed run. <laughs> simple, simple, leave it to me. Oh, Brother's orders. So yeah. We're over the calm land. We skip the scene now, and now we have Oh what wait, seven four twenty uh, oh okay, back sets the score with seven forty two. Cause yeah, we have a funny mini game. You heard it already on, uh, you've seen it already on back screen, I suppose. Then, uh, just as a hint, if you have to, comp if you have your volume pretty loud, turn it down because it's gonna get loud and messy right now. And if you're allergic to f fast flashing pictures, look away for the next few minutes because this is not gonna be good. Seven forty two is the target. Seven forty two is the target. Hey, Go. Yumi, It's almost time. Do you think people will show up? <clears throat> you betcha. The Thunder Plains will be packed. But what are you gonna sing? Nothing. We're gonna sing 1, nothing. 1,175. Wow. For real? Yeah. Oh my god, boy, what's... My arm is... My arm is dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow, did you write that? It's more like Congrats, I Jim. I can hear it echoing inside Now me. it's time we find out how Leo Man? does it. I think so. It all depends on Leo now. Leo's the only one who can beat you still. <laughs> I'm learning more and more. 
bits and pieces of her memories keep pouring in. It's like yeah, Leo. It's one like one I seven can five. Feel what she was feeling. <laughs> Thus shall Len's scattered thoughts be woven into, into a bittersweet a song. song. Something, Something like, like that. that. Hey, that, that was poetic. poetic. <laughs> <laughs> you too, dude. <laughs> we'll be arriving soon. After Buddy drops us off, he and the others will go pick up the spectators. Okay, so we now we will go to, to the Thunder Plains to prepare the concert. But we find out there is a monster running around that is uh, eating our viewers. So, of course, that we can't accept. So, we're gonna kill it. And I personally like to call or uh, to refer to this section as caves and dragons because who needs dungeons and dragons because yeah the monster that we're gonna kill is a dragon and it lives in a cave so we head to the thunder plains now hello galwing yeah we've got a sticky sh All right, mission time. Free con Pre concert hurt fest time. By the way, for those who didn't know by now, uh, who didn't uh, notice it by now because we skipped scenes, uh, pain likes to hurt stuff and people. I think Leo got an 870. Oh, the controller fell out. I know that feel. All right. So this monster is one of uh, is a very very special in a kind because uh, it is actually immune to flare. So our main damage dealer won't be able to deal any damage here. But the others deal enough damage that should be enough to kill it relatively quick. Just hope no one dies, especially not Flan. Because if Flan dies, that can be a problem from this point onwards. Because there is a fight coming up in the end of the uh, game. Where an enemy has an attack that always will deal fixed um always deal fixed uh 1250 damage uh we will have to hope that uh flan has a high enough level in the end to have an hp value above that therefore we will have to change uh some equipment uh to give him more hp in general because he has a very low hp value because he's a, a magical monster he's not a tank Alright, that's the mission complete. And now before I forget that in the end, I'm gonna do an early menuing because we got a garment grid earlier that has a very, uh, that is very beneficial for magicians because it boosts the speed in which they can cast their spells. I'm gonna equip it right now before I forget it again in the end. Normally we do that menuing a little later. Okay, now we talk to Riku. And we'll see that there is some beef going on on the grounds. Because as I said earlier, the Youth League and New Yevon are close before starting a war and those two fractions are getting on each other right now. So of course they're having like a war here already. So 
So yeah, that's that. <laughs> and now we will have the concert. Why? And no one else because there's no one else important. Cap up. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've called you out here today to tell you it's a prank. Go home. No concert. No refunds is not necessary because the concert was for free. Inconceivable! <laughs> Alright, one of the best voice lines in the game. Where I'm very happy that we decided to run this uh, on this marathon the game on English instead of on Chinese. I'm a I'm for certain. Yes. So, uh, I said earlier that LeBlanc gets very uh, different after she has met with her lover. And her lover actually is Newt, the leader of uh, the Youth League. And LeBlanc is with us right now. Watching this scene with us. And they're talking about Vecna Gun right now. It it out. But Newt says he has a plan. And in the moment when Gipple plan. will ask Newt what about it LeBlanc, uh, the feet crashes. And then LeBlanc is, uh, well, is very, it dies, very no sad apology. because uh, it cut off like this when he was getting to the... Well, Why did it have to come like that? Just when he was getting to the juicy bits! Whoops, my mistake. What a piece of junk! Forget it, I'll go ask him myself. What about the Gullwings? I think that we should help out Nuge. But first, I want to try talking to Shu Yin. I have to tell him how Len felt. I'm sure he'll understand. Alrighty, that's the end of chapter 4, the final battles are about to start, but the run still will take like uh, 45 minutes, because we have to do some fights still, uh, and other stuff, cutscenes, so for now we say to infinity, and beyond! So yeah, this now is normally a point where we do the menu. But I just wanted to do it earlier because I tend to forget it in the last runs because I'm still a little rusty in this game. Only done like two runs uh, as a D-Rust because I had some problems over the past time. So we're choosing a temple to land in and now the time for invasion has come. The Sphere Hunter Team Golvi. Hmm? The name doesn't fit really. Your friendly Nay! Huh? That name doesn't fit anyhow really yeah. too right now. Well, what are we called, called right now? Does it really matter? Good point. Good point. But we never know the name because we skipped that scene because that's slow. So now we jump in Besate Temple because uh, Besate and Subbabel are the fastest to go for. And since Besate is the very top on the list, we go Besate. So now we have a split that I like to call more shinies because we have to fight for uh, a total of uh, five more shiny Pokemons uh, in the next three battles. And we have 
the last big run changer coming uh, one of the last big run changers coming up right now because the second of these fights it's very hard it has a high chance to game over and it has a chance to ruin the setup because if flan dies in the second battle that we will have here um the run is basically over because that's the most experience we gain in the game and without those flan won't be able to have enough to survive the attack from the enemy later on so that was shiny Whoops, sorry. Ah, that was shiny frost last. That was shiny frost last. And the next enemy really is just mean because it there is so much that can go wrong. They have a chance to, uh, to soft lock you to death, to stun lock you to death, uh, or are just very mean in general. So this can either be a big time save in most runs, or a big time loss, if not even a run kill. Um, I gave up on scissors, so I'm just gonna restart fight. You died, or what? Or you're uh, just friend, starting? Friend, friend died, so... Uh, oh. So you're just resetting, huh? Yeah. Well, that so means... But that means... That means... But the problem is, uh, when they die here, uh, that also means you have the autosave is set very poorly. Oh no. Okay, because the autosave is set pretty poorly, the autosave is before Fever, so you have to fight Dark Fever again. Or Shiny Frostlass. Wait, did, did Backspawn die on Mega Sisters? Yeah, but I saved before, so... Okay, cool. Yeah, the Mega Sisters fight is... Can go one of two ways, and it goes very poorly for me right now. There's the uh, not the not so mighty guard. They're all still alive. Goon died. This is not looking good. If the main damage dealer dies, they are have still all three alive. I think I have to reset myself. Fairaga on the. Goon. God damn it, just kill them please already. Okay, the first one is dead. So yeah, as you can see, so yeah, as you can see, that fight was pretty bad, but at least I survived. First try, sisters for you, or what do you mean? Yeah, first try, but it was really slow. Nah, so we're we about, so we're still about on the same pace. <laughs> yeah. So, but I still have to do some menuing now because Goon died, and they used Fireaga on Sea Goon. So you're ahead of me, Jimbo. You're leading right now. <laughs> Ooh. That, that's what we meant before. This, uh, the the uh, run isn't over before you haven't been at this point or at the next point even. But yeah, that fight went terrible for me. Not so mighty guard before even one of them was killed. They killed Goon. That was terrible of a fight for me. But at least Flan didn't die, so that's something. Alright, last shiny Pokemon. Shiny Cofagrigus, aka Dark Anima. Let's hope for a fast fight here. Because it's able to kill it before it even does one attack if you're lucky. Nice crit. Ooh, Goon getting the crits. Goon getting the good crits. Oh, no, Jeff gave. Oh shit, I forgot to unlearn the f Why did I forget to unlearn the fire spells? All right.
Bye. Anima down. And now we have another breakpoint. Because now is the point where we unequip uh, the flan. Uh, re equip the flan. Why am I not skipping this scene? I'm stupid as always. Uh, so, first of all, uh, equipment, flan. So, we give him the warrior class so he gets more XP. And we switch the ring to. Where is it? The iron bangle. And he has enough HP here, so that he is safe. Goddamn gate. Okay, that gives me time to catch up again. That is the exact hey. problem that I had yesterday. It cost me the run yesterday that I hit this gate that Jimbo probably just hit. Yep. Man, we're actually having a close race again. Oh goddammit, why am I stupid? Because, yeah, just to say, uh, yesterday's race, uh, Beck and I finished 13 seconds apart from each other. Not even gonna go for it. Just gotta go safe. To wait for an extra cycle. So, this is a stupid music riddle. It's stupid and it's music. No. But it's always the same. Normally there is like some platforms here around that tell you which notes you have to play, but since it's always the same... We just skip the first piano, and then just run past, uh, then just do the second and the third, because they have these big gates here that we can't just run through. The third piano. No. Why do I keep getting in? Fa me. Fa. So. Do. But yeah, there are still two points in this run where we can change, and that's exactly the next two battles. I got the side door. Because in the next two battles, there are some things that can either gain a few seconds or cost a few seconds. The next boss is very dangerous because it's potentially that he wipes our party very fast. Yeah. Are you all I could do and in the second battle, it's just in the end of the battle, uh, they still cast a spell on us. And there are two spells, if they cast them, it could be that we have to uh, two out of five spells. Uh, to be exact, uh, that would mean that we have to do an extra menu to unlearn spells that we learned from getting hit by the spell. It's from two years ago. I'll watch it. So the second encounter can, in the end, cast uh, fire, water, thunder, or uh, ice you know you won't... in the strongest form in the gas spell or flare. And we don't want to see him using fire on Sigun or water on the flan. Because if that happens, we have to do some extras. <laughs> exactly, don't count me out just yet. Oh my god, he's back here! I just didn't notice. Theo's right on our tail. Oh, yes. Well, that's gonna be interesting then. Alright, stupid music riddle! Part 2! I mean, I'm guaranteed to get the tail fight correctly. Ah, so. that's perfect. You're never guaranteed to get it, uh, to get it oh, correctly. Oh, I never die whatsoever, so the HP is all just right. It Chill never out. happened They're to me before, until I was on a 2 minute PB run a few and weeks back. I already told you that the thing that you're thinking oh, about God, has to meet a threshold that you never get to use, <laughs> or to even reach. <laughs> We shall see. What happened? She's in so yeah, Where second part of the stupid music Captain. riddle. Uh, the notes are spread over some platforms, and we have to press the platform. Uh, we have to enter the platforms in the right order. 
to get the right melody in the end. Go, go, back, verm. So, touching the safe sphere here to fully heal our party. <laughs> go, go, Christmas. One more platform that we have to go on and then we're done with this. And that's stupid music riddle part two. Now we have to listen to the full song twice until the gate opens and then we have a few minutes of cutscene. Just uh, one, two, three, four, five battles until the end, mm. and a few more cutscenes before that. Before that, and in between that. Thanks for the applause. <laughs> Yeah, Vecna gun is moving. Alright, uh, in the next cutscene when we hear the words I will shoot barrel eye, this is the cue when I say I'll gonna take a quick toilet break. Because then I have a few minutes of nothing to do. So then someone else has to take over the commentary, although it's not a thing much here to commentate right now, at least on my end. I have a plan. What? He acts through another's body. I'll shoot. All right. Now it's toilet break His time. His body will be useless, but if we're lucky, he won't die. Shuyun will abandon Barilai. How much the RNG can affect the run at this point? There is one point where you can actually get RNG, and that's what I'm I'm trying My to tell the German ready. guy since the very Shuyun start. Um, so the tail fight Huge. is specifically scripted, like it's always gonna be um, opening with a tail swipe, and then it's always gonna follow with a laser. The thing is, with the setup we have, the only way for the tail to go for another swipe is to meet a certain, a certain like HP threshold uh, in sucks. between those two swipes. Which means that we would deal enough damage in a row to actually skip the lasers, that. which is very it's no l low possibility to do, because 
We don't have the fast cast speed on the flan, so we have the time to let the tail go onto the laser pattern for us to just bypass the second swap. So there's a chance. It's very little for being double swiped, but it requires crits everywhere. So it's highly unlikely to happen. It can happen, but it's very unlikely. So. But I guess some people are just too stubborn to just listen to the explanations to the, the, the very end, so not on my end. But I... It hurts so much. Forgive testing, us. testing. Ah, there's the problem. Uh, yeah, RNG also doesn't end with the tail, but after that we have the Wagner Gun's leg. Uh, after the leg died, he has a few like uh, supportive units with it that will still do some spells. Uh, as I said before, if they use uh, a certain spell on a certain uh, enemy, uh, on certain of our monsters, we have to do an extra menuing for a few seconds to unlearn spells that it learns. Yeah, so that's not very RNG. You cannot die. It, so. Yeah, you, uh, we Just can't die, but we can lose about five to ten seconds. Yeah, but nothing you can do about it. So yeah. It's not even RNG, it's just scripted. It's always going to be that. So it's you're still RNG if you want to... Because it's a 2 out of 5 chance to get no one of those spells. So it's still RNG if you get the spell uh, on the right person that you have to unlearn stuff. I mean, no matter uh, then, what, you have then, to heal, then, so you're going to lose time. Mm. So. Then we will have the uh, core fight, where we fight oh, wait, the main core, which we have to kill, accompanied by two legs. There's the RNG that Flan hits the core, not the legs. Because if he hits the legs, that's the wasted time, wasted damage. And same goes then after for the head. The head has two horns. If he flares the horns uh, instead of the head, that's also like one or two seconds time loss. It's not too much, but uh, from what I've heard so far, like uh, a comeback. Uh, but Jimbo and I definitely can still have, and maybe Leonis is also. If we both have very bad RNG in the next battles, everything is still open. I don't want friends to die. Or I mean, okay, I, are, so I if you want the ultimate RNG kicking in, the game can soft lock on the core. That's it. Ah, please don't mention it. Had that happen once to me. Then I'll like more likely take the cutscene during the credit scenes. At a soft lock during the credit scenes, what I had once that my game crashed literally after uh, like a minute after I killed Suyin. Okay, I'm able to skip stuff here again. That's plan B. Hey, no matter how monstrous it looks, so we can. You never used to be this. And I never was the weight like a... Alright, so yeah, there's still a lot of uh, RNG Thank involved God. in the next battles. And we'll see. The worst part is right now I haven't checked my uh, goon if he actually has enough HP. Uh, HP. Probably will do a safety look there. Because if he dies in the start, that will definitely be a kill for the run. Or for the try. So I'll maybe have to give him like... Uh, the warrior class, so he has more health. We'll make him slower, but that'll be worth it then. Alright, let's see. But I think Goon should be good. I mean, normally he has like 1500, 1600 health. Look! Don't think that would make that much of a difference just by missing out on sisters. Experience. I mean, that's a lot of experience, but not that much in the end. That it should matter that much. Oh, we'll see. Also, fun fact: Wagner gun is being controlled by a piano. Fu Yin did never develop a Wagner gun. He was never there when he was. Uh, he never talked to anyone. Probably that had access to him or informations to him, but he knows exactly what notes to play to activate it. Maybe because he is a professional pianist. Yeah, but I mean, just because he knows how to pl uh, play piano, that doesn't mean that he knows how to activate activate Wagner Gun because he doesn't know which melody activates him. Oh, he knows because of the Crimson Squad. I uh, wouldn't say that too loud. 
because I don't think they ever had access to Wagner Gun before, until uh, the only ones knowing about Wagner Gun were the f uh, were the, the three. Squad. No, were uh, Newt, Baraline, Gibble. After Which they were part of the Crimson Squad. Yeah, but only they know after uh, Suyin had showed it. This relic's get. All right, a little flashback. We're hearing the voices of Orin. Braska and Jekt in this sea in the next battles. If we all attack giving some once, emotional speeches or up. hints. Leave the We've got Guess that I just had a follow alert, but I have no Let's idea go. who because I know uh, that. But thank you whoever that was, thanks for the follow, get your high fives, make yourself comfy. Go, go, go. Back home. See you later. Got it. I don't even yeah, know I get a follow alert right now. I don't even have my alert box here. As long as the tail goes onto the laser pattern, you cannot die. So there's no... You still can. No. If, uh, if it goes the... onto the laser pattern, if... you cannot die. If he uses the laser to kill Flan and the others then start <gasps> using... The time for that. And then he starts using the others. He had that Whatever. time plenty for me. <laughs> Prove to be pointed. You cannot die when it goes onto the laser. <laughs> I died to the laser already. <laughs> Three times in a row, you did. You get everyone died to the laser. No, you only got one enemy died. That's it. Yeah. Therefore, you cannot die. <laughs> well, okay. I don't like the eight goons' Friends HP. Friends are your strength. He will survive with 33 HP after the tail swipe. I hope the poison won't kill him. And the poison killed him! And the double tail swipe! But he missed he missed Flan with the second tail swipe! Oh my god, am I lucky! No, that happens quite uh, often. I just died. No, I mean he literally did the double tail swipe and then missed exactly Flan. Yeah. Guess what? You got the crit before the tail pattern. That's why. That's why I was explaining since the very start. But yeah, someone is just trouble. too stubborn to even hear it. <laughs> Just to cheer you up, I died to the second tail swipe. Want to get the heal? All right, so Jimbo loses one minute thirty due yeah. to that. Th th thanks for that, Habkai. <laughs> All right, reviving, healing. Leo, where are you at right now? Have a guess. Tail. Yes. Just start it or...? I'm about to start it. Okay. Still pretty close though. <laughs> Alright, next is the leg. Look at them legs! Oh, them legs! Oh. <laughs> Alright, them legs. Even on the laser. But yeah, I, it's almost as if I didn't know the game. Wow. When you get home. I literally got so many crits that I killed Leg before the first flare. And he uses Water Gar on the flan. So I have to do an extra menu to unlearn those. Yay! <laughs> well, that's a few seconds time loss. Alright, that's the leg. I'm going. Now for the torso, or rather the power core of Vecna Gun. Alright, uh, one Mega Elixir. Equipment Flan, change back to Thief. Iron Bangle back to ring, so he attacks faster. And then make him unlearn water and water on. 
And the rest of the game is pretty much done for because we have no more controls except setting the stars of the monsters to suppose how they fight. But since we only mash everything up to five stars to deal most damage, nothing much left to do here. Oh, Mashigun got flared. 4 HP. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> that was All right. A dramatic music change. Also, fun fact. Newt and Gibble agreed that they want to take the torso. But they're it. shooting on the head. We'll finish it. All right, the run's pretty much over. It's basically impossible to die here now anymore. Now we just have to hope that Flan attacks the core in the middle instead of the legs. Because he already hit the leg once. And hitting the leg is just a waste right now. And there goes the torso, the power core. So, it's only a few more minutes of cutscenes, two more fights, and what then now? the run's already over. At least on my end. Uh. Maybe, we're Maybe we're finished? Nope, we're not finished yet. Finished indeed. All of Spira is finished. So yeah, I have no idea who's where, but I can pretty much say from now on, I guess there's not gonna be too many changes anymore. I mean, if Jimbo doesn't pay attention, I might just get on his this tail. This is it, everybody! Uh, Stay focused! Say that again? If you don't watch out, I might be just behind you. I think you are just behind me. I've just seen you just behind me. Again, you've got a habit of that, Leo. Alright! I mean, I'm probably... Like, I don't I don't want to... Uh, I'm I think firing Bagver with my mouth! Bagver and I just have the same amount of um, time lapse between each other but compared to you guys I might just be the fastest because I'm just literally coming back from a death that took me five minutes to get <laughs> well just that's like yesterday fun. that's how RNG can go I mean I would have won yesterday too if I uh, if I uh, I would have made my comeback would have got uh, back if only I wouldn't have uh, had the massage and uh, that I ran into the gate in the end. I probably would have had him too. This repulsive world. And that's the end. One more boss. Time's coming up in about uh, two or three minutes. Even, oh, even less. Sooner. Even sooner, yeah. Because we have a small cutscene now here that goes like 132 minutes, and a fight that goes like 10, 15 seconds, and then it's done. It's done already.
So yeah, time is when we hit Thuyin with the last hit. When we deal the final po uh, points of damage to him. <laughs> I must tell you, words left unspoken for a thousand years. I love you. And I'm grateful, grateful that you stayed. All right, Jimbo, good going. going. You didn't. But I couldn't save you. Push it back. Oh, I, got, I actually matter. got some good RNG on the head. Don't go oh, I literally like alone. killed both horns. Uh, the goons killed the, the right one and Rest. the plan killed the, the left one and all the damage went onto the head. Oh crap, I see a GG back here in chat. You bet. Yep. Oh god, how did he catch me up again? He was a, she he was a sister's fight behind, what the heck? <laughs> GG man. He went faster. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, in the moment that you uh, died on sisters, I thought I had that. <laughs> no. But yeah, TT man, TT. Alright, last fight, few more attacks, get ready on time, time is on last hit. So I'm gonna tell you when. I one second. Wow. <laughs> You're the only ones who can stop him. Shut up, Braska. And time. Uh, Alright, let's see. Hey, my Shein fight's coming up now. 244.18. Actually, not that bad. I'm back a minute ahead. I really will have to watch the VOD after this run, because I want to know what happened after Sisters in the end. Because I know I had a terrible Sisters, but that shouldn't be compared against the, uh, that run. <laughs> I was, I was glad I saved before the sisters. I thought like if anything Ah, happened. so that's already that's the point then probably. And? Because and you I, could and because plan, plan died at the start, so I was like okay reset. Okay. No okay. No in that case, then in that case, then I probably know what happened because I still had a very very bad sisters fight. That you probably <sighs> just had the second fight very good, huh? No, yeah. I'm Team Kardashian. Hey, I, think, I, think, I think I think I didn't heal after, after, after Sister's oh, fight. So. I didn't heal after Sister's oh. fight. Do you them? A thousand years, Jim? and this yes, moment is all Cheers we back. get. GG, guys. This moment's enough. So, yeah, very emotional scenes dance. here. Here's Elbot. Just knowing how you feel Thanks, is enough. That was Jen and how? Oh god. <laughs> how, how did Flynn Let's die? Wow. <laughs> Let's go home. Oh, because Shreen crit, that's all. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Ouch, unlucky. But hey, we see the no. world champion no. for once. It was all a thousand years ago. And time. We've come too far to look back now. GG, Leo. GG, Leo. Rest, Shuyin. Rest with me. So yeah, it was a great race. Closer than yesterday, at least. Although we all finished within three, uh, within four minutes, so not too bad. Three. <laughs> I'm stupid at math. 
<laughs> within, well, oh no, within, within three minutes ten to technically t uh, three minutes eleven, so within four minutes also is right, kind of. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good race, it was a very nice and good race. Um, want to thank you, Leonis, for prepping this up, for inviting us. Thanks for Femaphone for hosting this event. Thanks for people in chat who are here to talk with us, support us, do stuff with us, have fun with this run. Yeah, I'd like to say thanks to Leo and also thanks to all the guys for helping. This was my first marathon. So, yeah, it was definitely an experience. So, thank you, guys. And having a race that close is really coming up for something. I mean, it's not as close as the one that we had yesterday to compare, but it still was a very good race. At least we all were pretty close this time, instead of two people being ahead and the other two being a little behind, or a bit behind, or a big chunk behind, even. <laughs> Oh well, everything worked out today. We all got our skips. At least from what I've seen. What I think I've seen. <laughs> and on my screen we will see a small scene if we still have a small second. Because I'll show you a different ending. Than the one that you just seen on back's screen. Because you can press X here to whistle. To make someone having an appearance. If you get more percentages, there is another better ending that you can get at this point. If you got like 90% or, or above, you get, uh, uh, you see Faith, uh, the one from Bahamut. And it will ask us if uh, we want to see him again. Yes. And if that works, then after the credits, we actually will see how he comes back to life. And a heartbreaking reunion hoping. scene. Sorry for the spoilers for everyone who didn't play the game yet, but yeah, yeah now you know what you to do. You just have but to you get know, so many percentages. I'm not <laughs> and you have to see a certain cutscene in Chapter 3 in Guadalajara. You will always have a place. Here in my heart. We'll always be connected. Alright, yeah, then I guess that's the end for us. And we can say goodbye. Thanks guys for the rest. Thanks Leo for Thanks, the guys. Rest.